Hi, my name is Alex Jerome, the design manager here at Green Hippo, and today we're going to take a look at how to create the ultimate visual experience with 3D projection mapping. We're going to take a look at how easy it is to design, prepare, and deliver the ultimate 3D projection mapping project and how to save you time and money with the incredible tools Green Hippo has to offer. All right, let's go ahead and hop right in. All right, so when you're dealing with uh, 3D projection mapping, you're going to want to have some sort of 3D object. Uh, your 3D object could be um, bought on sites like uh, TurboSquid. It could be LiDAR scanned if you're working with the outside of a large building. Um, you could also use AutoCAD models if you, if you have those in your pipeline or if you're working with some type of product designer. Uh, but you're going to need to have some type of, of 3D model. Today we'll be working in this scene that I developed in Cinema 4D of this brewery. And they are having a uh, either like a grand opening or a big event, and they want to have projection mapping kind of all over this place. Uh, today we're going to be focusing in on these tanks in the back, though. And they want to have um, a projection mapping going across kind of these front faces of this tank. Now, once you have your 3D model, uh, you're going to need to go through a process called uh, UV mapping. And what UV mapping is, is taking actually these, if we can show them here, these faces or this geometry that is making up your 3D object and taking that 3D geometry and laying it flat in UV space. So if you imagine if you had like a, um, a cardboard box and you, were, uh, and you were to cut the edges of the cardboard box and then lay it flat on the ground, that would be laying out your UVs, giving your content creator a, a clean canvas to work on. So let me hop over to a different scene that I have set up for you. Uh, and we're just looking at the tanks. And you can see this test card that I have on here. You can see this uh, checkered pattern that I have on here shows me that I have my UVs laid out nice and clean. And over here is actually my UV space. So I've taken these cylindrical objects and I've laid them out in my UV space to make a flat canvas for my content creator to go in and then start creating the animations too. Once you have done this, you would export out the UV map into any type of animation software like uh, After Effects or, or anything like that. So if we pop over to After Effects really quick, I have a scene set up here where I have imported my uh, UV map and then I have created content based upon that space. So I have this, and Real quick, the aspect ratio here is a little bit wonky if you're if you're used to dealing in HD or 16 by 9 uh, type aspect ratio. Um, this is a, a one to one um, ratio, which is very um, it's what UVs usually deal with in 3D space. So I'm keeping this kind of wonky aspect ratio and I'm just gonna show you how easy it is in Hypnotizer to import this, this content and get it working for us. So we have these uh, bubbles going and yeah, uh, we're gonna project this on the, uh, on the tank. So after you have acquired your UV or your 3D model, you have laid out your UVs and you have built your content based upon those UVs. You would export that out and then we're going to hop in to Hypnotizer. All right. So in Hippo, I've already created a demo for you real quick. If you, and I'm going to breeze through a couple of these steps, but if you have any questions or want further in-depth instruction on how to do a couple of these things uh, that I'm just going to touch on, uh, go to uh, green-hippo.com and check out Hippo School Online and there are just a ton of in-depth videos that go through all of these things step by step. All right, so um, I have already imported my Bubbles 03 piece of content right here and I have mapped it to a bank. Um, in my output, 
All right, so in uh, Output Manager, you can see that I already have my default mix patched into Shape, and then Shape outputting to one of my other monitors over here, and uh, we're gonna touch on that a little bit later. Down here in the viewport, you can see where I've actually made a little bit of modification to uh, the resolution. I'm not outputting uh, 16 by nine, but now I'm doing that same resolution that I rendered out my UVs to. So it's 1024 by 1024 gives me this perfect square, which is that one to one that the, uh, that the UVs work in. So if we pop over to mixes, we can see that over here as well. Um, over here on the left, you can see all five of my mixes that I'm working with, but right now we're just gonna concentrate on mix one. And in mix one, layer one, here is that um, funky aspect ratio of 1024 by 1024. All right, perfect. So mix is all set up, patch is all set up, and we have our media imported, cool. Now let's get into shape. Shape is Hippotizer's, or Green Hippo's uh, proprietary 3D engine. Uh, is very similar to Cinema 4D if you've ever worked in, uh, in, in any 3D software before and, and Blender. So if you've worked in those programs before, you're gonna feel real comfortable in here. All right, so I have gone in and uh, I, I'm just looking at this simple scene right now. We're just gonna take a look at these, at these beer brew tanks in the back. Uh, to import a object, you go File, Import, and you can actually import Cinema 4D's uh, native files directly into Shape, which is really cool. Uh, Shape also accepts OBJ, FBX as well. Okay, so when it comes in, it came in with the same test uh, pattern that I had in Cinema 4D, which is this checkered UV pattern here. But we've already laid out the UVs, we've created custom content based upon those UVs, and we've already imported that custom content into Hypnotizer. So now we just need to get that content onto our model. So let me go ahead and show the visualizer here as well. Visualizer uh, showing the output. So right now we're actually outputting this pattern, but we don't want that. We want the bubbles, right? So real fast up here. Again, if you have any questions on this, Hippo School Online, great resource to have. But I've enabled my network manager. I've patched a camera so I can see my output from inside shape. And I've dragged in some of my inputs to my materials. So my input one is actually my mix one that I've renamed as beer. All right, so what you have to do is just select the, the object that you want to um, apply the material to or the input to. And down here in the properties panel, twirl down material and then select that input. So beer was my input one, which is my mix one, right? Now I get the test card over here, but down here in my output, you actually see that content playing perfectly. And because we aligned it to the UVs and created the content based upon those UVs, simply applying the input to the model is, has mapped our content perfectly. Now on top of this, if we go back into Hypnotizer, we can very easily switch up the look if we wanted to. So I can adjust the colors. I can add effects. I can even switch the content with a click of a button. And with three clicks right there, you can see I have a completely different look than what I started out with. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and get back what we had here. Make this somewhere around. There. All right, perfect. So from here, in shape, we have uh, applied the input, but now we want to really place the projectors and start. All right, so here we have a little bit of more of the brewery all fleshed out. 
you can see a bunch of these test cards all around. Uh, we have projection on the walls, projection on the tables. We have uh, LED screens on the behind the bar and on the wall over here, as well as a projection mapping actually in the text of the sign itself. But again, we're just going to be for now concentrating on these brew tanks in the back. So you can see here that I have placed in my scene two projectors, and I want to know if this placement of these projectors on, I'm, I'm imagining that they would be placed on the beams up here on the ceiling. If these are a good spot, if they cover, if they're gonna hit the tanks in the back and uh, whether or not I can go down to one. So for really diving into the depth of figuring out what kind of projectors you need and how many you need, we have a great tool called case studies. Now in case studies, it's going to have a bunch of different modes to where you can find out a lot of different information. So right now we're looking at the case, mode, case study mode coverage. And this is gonna be the coverage of which the light coming from the projector is spreading across your subject. And with two projectors here, we are looking like we are getting some fantastic coverage from the angle at which our projectors are right now. But let's go ahead and go down to one. So I'm going to take down, say, let's try to cut some cost here. I'm going to delete this projector and go down to one projector. All right, let's go back into case study. Here's one projector. Looks pretty good. Maybe we move it to the middle. You can see as I move it around, that light, that blue light is actually moving. So let's rotate the projector a little bit. I can come in here and be a little bit more exact with this projector and um, set this rotation to 90 down here. All right, I think, I think we could probably do this with just one projector. Um, let's look at a couple of different things that we can find out from the case study modes. In case studies, you have the coverage, which we're looking at. Uh, we can also check out pixel stretch. Now, this is a interesting one because maybe with one projector, that pixel stretch might be a little bit too significant and we would want to go back up to two projectors if that content that's going to be uh, stretched across these uh, cylindrical objects might be stretched too much and deform our content too much. So we can look at that. We can look at a bunch of different things, the contrast, the brightness reflected, brightness hit, uh, the individual pixel size of how these pixels are going to be displayed on your subject as well. Lots of information to be gleamed from our case studies. But okay, so say we're happy with this one projector. Uh, we've done all the case studies and we think we have it in the position that we want to have it in, right? All right, so in shape, we have placed the projector where it should go. But in the real world, it doesn't always end up in that same position with the exact same rotation. So now we need to figure out where our projector is in the real world. And, and place it in the same spot in shape. So the alignment tool makes that super simple. Up here by layout where we had the case study before, we're gonna drop that down and now go to alignment. And everything on your screen changes and you see all these vertices of the geometry um, displayed. So what we're gonna have to do is again, align this projector with the real world projector, okay? So, a couple things first. We're, this is the projector here that I'm gonna be working with. You wanna make sure that you have your projector patched to your output. In alignment, what the general rule of thumb is you wanna have at least six vertices of varying depth that you're selecting and placing as these reference points, right? So let me show you real quick what I mean. If I zoom in here and select one of these points, it's gonna highlight as blue. With the projector selected, I hit enter. And down here on my output, you can see that I have this uh, blue crosshair that, that appeared. Now, in the real world, you would see this blue crosshair appear on the output on the projection. So you'd be looking at your tanks and you'd be aligning this uh, crosshair with the um, 
reference vertice in your 3D geometry. So using the arrow keys, I can uh, either tap the arrow key to move pixel by pixel or holding shift and the arrow key, I can jump 100 pixels at a time. I'm gonna work my way up to where that vertice is. And again, aligning with the real world projection when I am on site, placing that crosshair where that vertice should be. And then I hit enter. And then over here, you can see my alignment points. It's created that first alignment point. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed up here a little bit and place the rest of these um, six alignment points real quick. All right, so we have our six alignment points made and I've tried to do it at varying depth along the subject. And it has modified the position of my projector in shape now to reflect the position of the real world projector. And that is how we projection map 3D objects quickly, easily, and in real time. For more information, head over to green-hippo.com. Now get out there, create something.